95 Honda Accord. I'm going to start up my car with what I know is a bad ECU or ECM, whatever you want to call it. It's your car's computer. Disregard the good that you see written on this one. It's actually bad. It did well for a couple of days and then yesterday started acting up. I got it out of a junkyard for 11 bucks, so I was just trying it out. So what I want to do now is start up the car and hopefully it's going to do what it did yesterday. The engine's going to run rough. The tachometer needle will be bouncing up and down. Check engine light should come on. So let me start it up. There we go. There's the check engine light. Red light up top's the seat belt, so disregard that. Let me shut it off. Now what we're going to do is tie into the OBD1 port, which is located underneath your glove box, and we're going to read the trouble code and go from there. If you look underneath your glove box on the bottom right corner, you should find a blue connection just like this. You'll see two sets of wires and two connectors. The one you want is the smaller one. The smaller one has two pins. That's the one we want. The larger one has three pins. I believe that's to be used with an OBD1 scanner if you have it and you know how to use it. But for what we're doing with a paper clip, we want the smaller one with two pins. Press in on the clip at the top or the tab and you can pull that connection out. Now what we need to do is jump this connection, meaning we need to connect the pin on the right with the pin on the left. To do that, I'm gonna use a paper clip, which you can see I have bent in the shape of a U. I'm gonna put one in on each side and push it in firmly just like that. Now we've connected those two pins, we've formed a loop. And if your Honda or Acura is 1995 or older, OBD1 is what you have. OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostics. 96 and newer Hondas and Acuras have OBD2, which is a more advanced diagnostic system. And now that we've jumped this connection, we're gonna cut the ignition on and use the check engine light to determine what trouble code or codes that we have. Place the key in the ignition and turn it to the second position. Don't start the car, just two clicks. One, two, and leave it right there. And now we wanna watch our check engine light, the yellow light. Let me block out the SRS light. SRS is Supplemental Restraint System. That's basically your airbag. So now watching that yellow light, that's going to tell us what our trouble code is. A long flash represents the first number if it's a two-digit code, and that was a long flash, and there was just one of them. So the first number in our code is one. Right there, that's a one. Now one, two, three, four. So our trouble code's 14. Let's do it again. Long flash, that's a one, one, two, three, four. Four. If you get two long flashes, the first number is two. Three long flashes, the first number is three, and so on and so on. Up into the 90s, I believe, trouble codes for Acuras and Hondas get up into the 90s. So you could be counting a lot of flashes, and you could have a single-digit trouble code as well. You could just have short flashes for a single-digit code. You could also have multiple codes, so if that was the case, we'd get this number, 14. Then there would be an even longer pause followed by your second sequence of flashes for your second trouble code and possibly three trouble codes. It could keep going and going, but for us, we have one trouble code, which is a 14. And on this list of Honda and Acura OBD1 codes, 14 is idle air control valve or bad ECM. In my case, I know that I just swapped out the ECU that was in my car that was working fine with one that I was trying out to see if it was any good. Then I got that 14. So I'm going to go with the 14 telling me that this ECU is bad. So now I'm going to take that bad ECU out and I'm going to put the ECU back in that's been in my car for the last several years. And you'll see at that point that the car runs fine. And now that we're finished checking that trouble code, we can take this paper clip out of there and plug this back in where it was. And to get the wiring harnesses off of the ECU, there are three connections. There's a clip right in the center of each one. You need to press down on that clip while you pull that pin out. The way I do it, I push in on the clip and I take a flathead screwdriver and pry that connection out a little bit. Then I can grab the plastic and pull it out the rest of the way. That way I'm not pulling on the wires. Because if you do that, if you pull on the wires, you run the risk of pulling one of them out. So press on the center, put that screwdriver in, and twist it back and forth, and then you can work them out without the risk of pulling out those wires. And now to put the good ECU in, you really can't mess it up because these connections are different sizes and they'll only go in one way. So you just push them in until they click. The car should start up and run fine. And thankfully it does. 
which tells me this $11 ECU from the junkyard is bad. And look for three links down below, one to a web page that will explain what all these numbers mean on your ECU. In case you need to get a new one, these numbers will help make sure you get the right one. Another one to a web page that has a list of common Honda and Acura trouble codes. And the last link goes to a video by Eric the Car Guy. He's got a lot of good information on Honda and Acura trouble codes. His video is where I got the idea to make this which does the same thing as the paperclip. It forms a loop on that OBD1 connection. I could have used this to do the same thing, but I wanted to show you how to do it with a paperclip because a paperclip's a more common item that most people probably have. So look for those three links down below. And the reason I have all this taken apart and the passenger seat taken out is because I have a water leak. I have water getting in the passenger side floorboard. So I'm trying to figure out how that water is getting in. And while I had it all taken apart and I had access to the ECU, that's why I decided to try out this one. I've actually had it about a year and a half, but I didn't have any reason to try it out. I bought it on a half price day at the junkyard. So I lost 11 bucks. And by the way, that's your TCU. That's a transmission control unit. Engine control unit, transmission control unit. Your car has two computers. Now it's not hard to get to these two, but if you don't know how, I have a video that'll show you. Look for a link to that video down below also. If you made it to the end, thanks for watching.